So this is the Rome Crow as it arrives at your door. We've just taken the lid of the box off. In here we have all our parts. This is the main part, this is the body of the model. Here we have the wing of the model and this is involved with all the steering and all the controls like that. Then we have our transmitter. In the RC world this is a transmitter but it's a remote control to a, a Falconer. Inside we have a LiPo battery which is in this box here. This goes in the head of the model and this is our power source. In the white box we have a charger which lives in here and the battery takes around 40 minutes to charge and uh, there'll be a link to a, a video showing you how to charge the battery in the description of this video. Here we have the famous wing beat glue and this is for rapid repairs in the field, it's really quick. This is the glue here and then we spray the glue with an activator which makes it go off really, really quick. It dries really fast and it means you can make repairs in the field. You don't have to go home and, uh, and sit in a dark room with a glue gun. You can fix it really fast in the field. Here we have our black elastic bands and we'll show you in a minute, but these join the wing of the model to the body. And we use elastic bands because it allows for a bit of a cushioning effect. If we crash, and we all crash, um, the wing hits the ground, the elastic bands takes a little bit of the force and it stops damage to the model. And finally we have these little red elastic bands and we use these to go over the Rocro's head and underneath we put a small piece of food for our falcons to catch. So we've just taken the Rocro out of the box and now we're going to put it together. And we start with our black elastic bands. When you get them out of the packet, you'll find they're quite tight. So it's a good idea to stretch them between your hands a bit and warm them up and make them a bit more loose. Then you can pop one band over the tail and these bands keep the wings on. And you'll see at the end of the Rocro, at the end of this tube, we have a carbon ring, which is this part here. And this is really thin, really lightweight, but also really, really strong. And this is to stop the elastic band from crushing the foam and keep the thing quite strong. When we get to the electronics, the first thing is to put the transmitter on, which you do with this switch down here. And uh, it's a bit bright today, but this red light turns on and tells you that it's working. When we send you your brand new Rocro, the transmitter that you get in the box is bound to the model. So this transmitter can only speak to this Rocro, and if you've got two friends flying Rocros with you, and uh, you're concerned that they'll speak to each other, don't worry about that, they can't uh, interfere in any way. So our transmitter is on, our elastic band is on the tail. We then put the battery in the head and now we want to connect our wings. Now on the end of the wing here we've got two connectors. We've also got a connector in the side of the crow here, this black one. And it's really important that when we join these together they're the, the, the correct uh, way around. If we do it wrong, the steering is reversed. Your left is right and your right is left and it almost immediately ends up in a crash. So it's really important that we get this bit right. You'll see on the connector here, we have a little silver mark. Hopefully the camera can pick that up. And we also have a little silver mark on one side of this connector here. And so when we join these together, they have to be facing each other and you have to be able to see both of them. And as long as you end up with two dots on one side like that, you can't go wrong. And these connectors have a little groove in them so you can't accidentally flip them the wrong way. They will always go in the correct way. So we join these in here like so. So they are connected. When we connect the battery to the model, it's really important that we keep it still and we keep it level. So I tend to rest it on my legs like this, connect the battery and count to five. And you'll hear a series of beeps and then it'll stop. And this is all to do with the stabiliser and it's important that it stays nice and still. The stabiliser learns which way is up and that means when we fly it with the stabiliser on you'll get a nice level gentle flight. Now we can turn the model around and connect the wings. There's a little groove here which goes underneath the head. Then press everything into place and you should end up with no gaps here. So if you have a cable in the way that's sort of jumped into the side of the road crow, take your wing off and push it back in again and so it stays nice and level. Then we take our elastic band and we ease it around the tail and stretch it out a little bit and they're always a little bit tight if they're brand new ones. And we 
you stretch it over his nose like this, or his beak rather, and we take the elastic band and it goes underneath this little hook here. If you find that the elastic band is too tight and it will only reach up here, like that, um, don't worry about that, that's fine. You won't have any impact on flight performance and as the elastic band gets used a bit more often, it'll stretch a little bit more and, uh, and it'll reach all the way. So he looks like this and the wings have a little bit of play in them. So if you have a crash or the falcon hits it really hard, they'll relax a little bit. Um, and the elastic band should break first in a crash. So if you land it like this and it all goes horribly wrong, the elastic band will break, the wings will ping off and there should be really uh, limited damage to your model. Now before we fly, we have to make sure that everything is correct and we need to trim it. Now on our transmitter, we have these little slidey things here and these control the movement of the flaps like this. Now first of all, we want to make sure that all the flaps are level and in the middle. And so we can turn these sliders and move them over a little bit until we end up with something like this. And it's really important that when we do this and they end up like that, that the stabilizer is off. If we put the stabilizer on, the flaps on the wings, they always move and it's impossible to tell which way is up and uh, which way it should be. So make sure that when you trim them, the stabilizer is off and uh, nothing moves at all. In every row crow, we have a stabilizer, which is inside the model right here. And that's a little white box. And the job of the stabilizer is to make flying a little bit easier. And uh, it has three settings, which is full, medium, and off. And to start with, we want to make sure that it's working properly. Now we do our best to ensure that already, because when we put the battery in the model, we keep it nice and flat and level, and we don't turn it at all and we leave it flat and level for five seconds and that's so that the stabilizer can learn which way is up. But now we're ready to fly and I just want to check that the stabilizer is doing what it should be doing. First of all I turn the stabilizer off using this switch on the transmitter and I move the flaps using the trims to make sure that they are perfectly level with the wing and level with each other so everything's nice and flat, nice and flush. But to fly in stabilizer mode it's important that we have the flaps trimmed up about this much. So probably three quarters of the way that they'll go. Now if I turn the stabilizer on onto full and I tilt the model one way, you can see that one flap is flat with the wing and this one is all the way up. And that's because it's trying its best to push this wing down. And when I turn the model at equal distance the other way, this flap now is flat and this one is doing its best to correct the model. So this works really well for left and right, but also up and down. So if the model is flying towards the floor into a crash, you can see that both flaps go up and they're trying to lift the nose of the model and pull it higher into the sky. And it'll still do left and right even when it's pointing down, but also when it's pointing up. It doesn't want you to climb so fast and so steeply that you'll stall. And so both flaps go down and they're trying to level the flight out and pull the nose of the model down into a level glide path. Now if we find that the flaps, when we turn them uh, to the side, when we rotate the model to the side, one is down, and you can see here one is down, that's because I've just changed the trim. When I turn it back to full mode, you can see it's flat. So it's really important that if the stabilizer is going to work properly and give you a nice easy flight experience, that you have the trims up like that, and when the stabilizer is on and you tilt the model to the side, one is flat, one is up, and the same the other way. And you'll find that as long as it does that, as soon as you launch the model, it will fly nice and level into the wind with a nice easy glide weight. So we're still in full stabiliser and that means that the model compensates for the wind. It also limits your bank angle to 30 degrees. So if I push the stick all one way, like I'm doing now, all the way to the left, it won't let me turn into a spin, it sort of controls it for me. And if I keep the power on about three quarters and don't touch it at all, and just point it into the wind, it'll steer really nicely and keep a nice straight line. 
And this is great for us learning, and also when we're trying to take photos of the model and make it look really pretty, we tend to put the stabiliser on, and it flies nice and gently. But it's not very good for evading the falcon, so I'm going to turn it into medium now. And this doesn't limit my bank angle, so I can roll the model now and turn it around. Um, and neither of the stabiliser modes do anything to limit the speed, so you can still go really fast whichever mode. But it still compensates for uh, turbulence, it doesn't move the flaps quite as much as full stabiliser mode. But uh, if you're in a sort of area of gusts or you're in uh, turbulence next to trees, it does a really good job of sort of compensating and making everything a bit easier. And now I'm going to turn the stabiliser off completely. And this makes the model really twitchy. And uh, you find that your controls on the sticks, they have to be really small. If you start pushing the buttons or moving the sticks really harshly, it will start to do all sorts of silly things and it's a good idea when you turn the stabiliser off for the first time that you're in a great big field like this one with this lovely long grass which means if you make a mistake and if you get confused and you're not sure which way is up if you turn the throttle off completely it will glide really nicely and even if you get confused and not sure which way is up and it lands you're really really unlikely to cause any damage in a field like this So we've done enough flying and now we're going to bring it in for a landing and just like launching it's really important that we land the model into the wind what we don't want is to land it downwind because the speed uh, stays on the model really easily so now we're putting it into the wind the throttle is off and as it gets close to the ground i just pull up a tiny little bit and bleed off all the lift <laughs> 